Hey, what's going on, chess lover? This is Maurice Bishop Chess. So y'all know my slogan, life is a game of chess. All right, guys, I want to show y'all this beautiful black lion game, or should I say the white lion, because I'm playing the white pieces and everything. And I actually play against this guy uh, who plays a Sicilian, but I'm letting y'all know that with the black lion, you could crush the Sicilian. It doesn't matter what they do. So, without further ado, let's actually get started. <laughs> I'll crack myself up. All right, guys. So, uh, e4, c5, I go d3. Uh, knight c6, knight b to d2, uh, g6, and c3. Uh, obviously, guys, um, the whole point of c3 is to, um, to obviously, um, prevent, uh, the knight from coming to d4. Really to, to prevent any pieces from coming to d4. But also, guys, I get this nice, um, breathing space for the queen to go queen c2, maybe queen b3, but we may not be utilizing that anyway. But I have some breathing room. Um, bishop g7, uh, queen c2, uh, queen b6, uh, and I go h3, guys. Now, this might, to the opponent, it might seem kind of passive and all that, but it's really not passive at all, guys. Because we're really about to do a pawn storm and everything and get it cracking. You know how we do when we play the black lion. Or again, should I say, the white lion. Alright, so my opponent plays e6. I play knight f3. Uh, knight e7 and then bishop e2. Uh, my opponent plays d5. Uh, trying to break in the center. But none of that really matters because, again, I have um, the queen and the d3 pawn and the knight backing up the e4 square with that pawn. So it doesn't really matter if he takes or not. Uh, that pawn would still stand. Um, so I just go g4, guys. That's what I do. I go g4. Um, d4 uh, in which I feel like this d4 pawn. A lot of people play this d4 pawn, but it, it just never works, man. It just never works. Like, they want us to take this pawn, and it, we're not going to take the pawn. Like, I don't know why they do d4, but it's just never going to work, guys. Uh, I would never take this pawn. Um, this pawn on c3 is still going to stay in there. Even if you take this pawn, I'm going to still be here. I don't even have to worry about him trying to attack another pawn because the queen b6, in which this queen b6 is pretty much not even supposed to be there, number one. But a lot of times, Sicilian players, they're going to play queen b6 because that's part of their opening book. But when you're playing the white lion and they really don't know what's going on, um, it's going to seem like a natural move for them. But in reality, uh, that queen b6 doesn't even need to be there at all. It's kind of pointless to be there. All right. So d4, I just go knight f1. Uh, he castles kingside, and I go knight g3. Simple as that. That's what we're going for, guys. Obviously, guys, you know, we have g5 moves, h4. And then also at times, guys, um, when we play the white lion, uh, sometimes we're going to sacrifice the knight on f5. All right. Um, e5 is played. Uh, I think this was even more passive. I, I think the e6 pawn should have stayed up here. But again, when you're a Sicilian player, you know, you have your... You know, you know, I don't know how y'all Sicilian players be, but um, that's just how they play. But I, I don't think this was the right move. I mean, I understand why the E5, because obviously you want to develop your light square bishop, because obviously you can't go B6, because again, that queen B6 does not need to be there at all. It is pointless to be there. You can't even do a queen side attack because this queen is on B6. It's just pointless. Um, so it seems like e5 will be the only move for him because of this bishop is an inactive bishop and he got to get his pieces free. All right. So I go rook g1. He goes a6. Uh, I think this was a waste of move. Um, bishop g5. Um, after bishop g5, he finally, he finally goes queen c7. But the thing is, guys, this kind of is too late now. Because after queen d2, he goes queen d6. And um, I really thought he was going to go at least rook e8 or whatever. And then if I go bishop a6, he will go bishop h8. Probably give me a fight. But it wouldn't really matter because um, I probably still would sacrifice on f5 anyway. Um, that's just me. Uh, but after queen d6, um, I go bishop a6. Uh, he goes f6. And I think that was probably the worst move to even do. 
Because after Bishop Catcher G7 check, I mean, not check, I just go Bishop Catcher G7. Um, he goes King Catcher G7, and I hit him with Knight F5. Now, with um, with Knight F5, guys, obviously, uh, I'm not only checking um, the King, but I'm also hitting the Queen. So, obviously, he, <coughs> excuse me, guys, uh, obviously, he's going to have to take this uh, Knight. You know, he's going to have to do it. Um, he actually took with um, the knight and not with the pawn. Um, but just to look at something, what would happen if he actually takes with um, the pawn? So G captures um, h5. Um, obviously, if he goes king h8, uh, queen h6, uh, I would think, because uh, I'm threatening to checkmate here. And then if uh, rook g8, um, I actually do like this uh, knight g5 move uh, as well. Uh, knight g5, uh, rook g7, bishop h5. And just for y'all uh, who don't know, obviously he can't take this uh, knight because of queen captures on d6. So obviously that's just not going to work. And um, as you can see with the engine or the self-analysis, they're now saying that he has to give up a piece. Um, in order to try to survive. So as you can just see, guys, you know, white is uh, pretty much um, better. So it didn't even matter if he took with the pawn or not. Um, but yeah, it would have gave him a little bit more fight. But at the same time, uh, yeah, it's just not going to work. All right. So let's get back to it. So um, after uh, he doesn't take with the pawn, he actually takes with knight catchers at five. Uh, I go G catches H5, and he does a blunder, guys. He goes G5, trying to close the position so I wouldn't do anything. But he should have known my name, Tactician30. You know, they don't call me Tactician for nothing. So, yeah, guys, we go Night Catchers G5. That's what we do. Uh, Night Catchers G5, uh, what he should have did, it, guys, he should have went King H8, uh, which, well... It kind of really don't matter because after, um, for instance, guys, if he goes king h8, I do have knight catchers um, h7. Um, obviously, if he does go, um, what you call it, uh, king catchers h7, I had this um, rook g6 move, and there's no way he can stop queen h6 checkmate. No way possible, guys, uh, which is, <sighs> yeah, this is just nasty, guys. I'm telling you, this is just nasty. Um yeah, so anyway, guys, so that's not what he did. He actually takes um, F captures G5. I go Queen captures G5. Obviously, guys, you will know that if he goes King H8, uh, Queen G7 is checkmate. So, for instance, King H8, G7 checkmate, right? Game over, right? But he actually goes King F7, and then after Bishop H5 check, normally it will be checkmate. But the fact that he only has one legal move, and that's actually uh, Queen G6. But, of course, guys, uh, he's pretty much going to lose the game. Uh, but after Bishop H5, he pretty much um, resigned after that. You know, so um, even if he made the game longer, obviously I'm not taking it with the Bishop. I'm taking it with the pawn. Um, yeah, guys, this is just this is just nasty. Because even after you take, I'm going to take with the Bishop. Uh, King G8. Um, bishop E8 check, and then no matter where you go, uh, the still check me. Simple as that. So, um, I hope y'all, um, like that game um, that I played. Um, I had played against the, uh, I think his name was Poem Push Up or something like that. But yeah, guys, that's who I played. Um, yes, guys, this is how the white line supposed to be played, you know, attacking and using some tactics. You know, that's how you do. Uh, if you have any uh, questions about um, the white lion and everything, uh, definitely drop a comment below. Uh, give me your uh, your comments on uh, anything else you want to learn. Um, also, guys, uh, just to say this, uh, I know a lot of y'all been asking for the L shot system course for white and black. Uh, I literally have it. Um, I have everything all outlined for y'all and everything Um, that video course will be uh, coming out. But obviously, guy, it's going to be in the chess university. And that's and that's the reason why I haven't been posting on YouTube a lot, because I've been working on a university to share with y'all uh, the black lion for white and black, uh, the L shot system for white and black. 
um, my wing gambit, um, my secret weapon opening for black, which that video course is actually finished and everything. And I have a couple other courses that's also um, in there as well. So just be patient with me, guys. I've been working very, very hard for it, which is why y'all haven't seen me on YouTube like that. So uh, definitely bear with me, guys. And uh, I will definitely let y'all know uh, when the university is complete. All right, guys. And also, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. All right, guys. Peace.